Hello, welcome to Late Night Creations. My name is Kendra and I'm glad you're here. Today I picked out some of my favorite spring DIYs from previous videos and just put them all together in one video for you to enjoy. So sit back, relax, and leave me a comment and let me know which was your favorite and have you ever seen me DIY these before? Did you watch the previous videos? For this first DIY, we're gonna use this sign I picked up at Dollar Tree. It's the perfect color already. You don't have to paint it. This cute little bumblebee I got at Dollar General is gonna be perfect for this. And this temperature gauge thermometer I got from Dollar Tree as well. Now I'm gonna just take off this little bell and the hanger. So we'll save those for another craft another day because I'm craft supply hoarder. So cute little bee, just gonna glue it over that egg shape, egg cut out with some hot glue. And then I decide it gets really hot in Texas and it's gonna melt that hot glue. So I decide to get out my E6000 and give it a stronger hold. And I did not put any kind of outdoor protection on this project. I should have, but honestly, it was really cheap and inexpensive so I can either remake it or fix it later. Now I'm gonna use these little tumbling tower blocks that come in that game from um, Dollar Tree and I'm gonna put them in the back of this because there was not a lot of area to glue it to my sign. So they work perfect, they're the right size, they fit right in there, great. Now I should have painted them white because you can see them through but I'm not gonna be that pedantic about this project. It's gonna be on my back porch and it's gonna look adorable cute. Now I was just sizing that up to see how my name was gonna fit. Why well, I didn't just put my name on there and then glue this on, I don't know, but that's just how I work. So a little E6000, a little hot glue, hot glue for a quick stick and E6000 for a long-term stick. So there we go, push it down, it's on there quick. This is a very quick and easy DIY and it, it turns out so adorable. Now I'm using my Frisco transfer tape that Wendy over at White Sparrow Living turned me on to and thank you, thank you Wendy, this stuff is amazing. It pulls right off of there, would you look at that? And it's really easy to work with and um, she is an amazing crafter. If you don't know about Wendy over at White Sparrow Living, go and check her out. Um, and look how easy it just comes right off, peels right off of there. And then I will reuse that two or three times as long as I, it doesn't get all dirty. DIY another one of these Dollar Tree signs and it already had a beautiful wood grain finish to it and I picked up these um, napkins at Dollar General the package was a dollar and I'm only using one of those little napkins I cut it out I peeled it apart I kind of sped this up too much I didn't have time to tell you what I did but I just peeled it apart where it was only one little layer of that napkin and now I'm just gonna dry brush so it looks a little whitewashed. I love that whitewashed look. You should know that if you've watched any of my videos. I love to whitewash, I love to dry brush. It just gives it some dimension. And I really wanted that napkin to pop on our surface. And so I like to take an old t-shirt, cut it up and use it for rags. And if you wipe that down, it gives your surface a nice smooth finish. Now a little Mod Podge, I buy Mod Podge by the gallon and it lasts me a long time. It's much more economical to purchase it that way. And so I'm gonna put this on here where I'm gonna put my napkin and a pretty, a pretty decent coat so that it sticks good. And I like for it to go ahead and put enough where it's gonna seep through. Now I have just a piece of plastic and my brayer tool brayer tool. hope I'm saying that right. And it helps to smooth that out so nice without tearing that little thin napkin. And just gluing down my edges, glue that around there with a little Mod Podge and get the edges really nice and smooth. 
and then I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top. Um, I have to be really gentle with that napkin. I waited until it completely dried to put the Mod Podge on top. So that way you're not putting wet on top of that, more wet on top of the wet napkin. So just a thin coat just to seal it. And it is so cute. That little bunny's so cute down there. So I cut this out on my Cricut and made a stencil. And I've got to clean up all my crumbs. Drives me crazy. And my Frisco transfer tape on there. And it wasn't quite long enough, so I used two pieces. And it works fine. I do it all the time. Uh, especially with stencils and if they're very big. And if you've seen these signs at Dollar Tree, you know they're really nice long signs. Especially for that price. So I'm just going to press it all down on there. And just peel it off. If I can get my fingers around it. And sometimes if there are uh, letters with an open, like an O or a C on there, I had a little trouble with the O and the C. Sometimes D's or something with an open spot, you have to kind of be careful, but just take your time. And then I just get it in there, center it the best I can, and scrape it down a little bit, peel that off. Look how wonderful that works. Oh my gosh, I love that transfer tape. Okay. They're, they're, not, they're not paying me to say that either. I just love it. Okay, now I'm going to peel the transfer tape back to reveal our stencil. You know I'm going to use that again. And then press it down. Get it all pressed down nice and good. And then I'm going to use this paint by Folk Art. I want to say it might be called Italian Sage. I'm not really sure. I wish I would have gone with a darker color. Because you will see when I take this stencil off that it's not dark enough. But I fix it, because that's what we do when we DIY. Um, I'm using this little sponge brush that came in a pack that I purchased at Michael's with a coupon and a gift card, and I'm just pouncing it up and down, up and down, up and down. And I always, I didn't put this in my footage, but I always put a layer of Mod Podge and let it dry before I start painting. and it prevents bleeding underneath the stencil. I'm just taking off this um, stencil off my project very carefully. I've, I'm too impatient. I like to peel it when it's wet. Sometimes I'll let it dry, but um, I like to peel it when it's wet because I like to see the results. So there we go. Get it all peeled off. And you can see that it didn't, it really wasn't dark enough. You couldn't see it good. So I took a really fine tip Sharpie and I've already done every bunny. And I'm just going to show you a little bit. It was kind of hard because the surface is kind of bumpy from the wood grain. It's not real smooth. But I just kind of took my time and went around each letter with my fine tip Sharpie. And if, you know, if I did it over again, I would use a darker color. But I think it turned out really good with that. Okay, now I've been using this all spring. I love this. I got this ribbon at Sam's on a big huge roll. So I just cut three pieces, each piece a little shorter than the piece before, and I'm making a really simple, simple little bow. Pinch it together, tie it with twine in the middle, and it makes a really cute bow. And just fluff it and twist it and fluff it till you get it like you want it. Hot glue it. I'm going to hot glue it to the top right above that bunny. And I think this thing turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. Everybody welcome. Okay, third DIY, maybe my favorite. I picked these two little houses up at Dollar General for $1.50 each. And I just kind of disassembled them. Took the little door off so I could paint it. Took the little... You're supposed to hang a picture on that, took it off. I've already painted that with my um, antique glaze. And now I'm going to paint this with that same green that I painted that other sign with. And I'm just going to give it a good coat. I think I only gave it one coat on each. No, I think I gave it two coats on each, the front and the sides on each one of these. And now I'm going to do the rooftops, just the front and the edges, because the top we're going to put some uh, faux metal on. 
and it wasn't quite dry because I'm impatient and just trying to be careful just to get that to, I wanted it a little bit darker so it would pop a little bit. I love, you know, contrast and texture. So there they are, finished. And now I'm gonna put some of this floral foam I got at Dollar Tree down in the bottom of this little crate that I had already done with that antique wax. And I picked up these adorable little bunny picks. I wish I would have gotten more, uh, but I really didn't know what I was gonna do with them, so I only got one package. And I'm really not throwing stuff in the floor. I have a trash can over there. And I'm gonna take the little bows off their necks, rip it off, tried to rip it off, it wouldn't come off. So I used a pair of scissors, cut the bows off the neck. The bows weren't horrible, but they just didn't match. And I used that same ribbon I used on that sign earlier and just made some little bows. I just cut a little piece off and pinched it in the middle and put a piece of twine around it. And I think they look really cute. I think these little bunnies are really cute for Dollar Tree for something you can get at Dollar Tree and two of them in a package at that. So they're really cute little picks. And then I decided those carrots you see up there, I'm gonna make some picks out of them too. So they came, several in a package. I don't even remember, I got those last year. There were a bunch in a package. When I got them, they were a dollar, but still at a dollar 25, it's a good buy if you can find them. So I cut my skewers down and I'm just poking them. There's styrofoam in the middle. I'm just poking them up in there. Now. Here's my Dollar Tree um, baking sheet that I've I've used so many of these, cut them up. Charmin over at Fixin' Two taught me how to use these for everything. So I'm gonna see how long I need it, how wide I need it. Do they bend real easy? They have these dots, so you just follow the dots to make a straight line. And then I'm gonna use this little, well, first I'm gonna cut it to fit. But I just use something that I've tried several different things and I finally found something that I like to smooth it out. Um, you could leave it rough if you wanted to, but I just have the side of this little tool um, and that's not even the lid that came on it. I don't even know where that where that came from, but just something you could use the side of a, a big marker or something, just smooth it out on both sides and then I I'm gonna glue these on and then I realize I have not painted the back and that is gonna probably show, maybe, maybe not show. So I'm just gonna paint the top part of that house and give it a, one little coat just so if you can, well, you will be able to see it a little bit and then that'll be good. I don't even have to uh, paint all the way down because that will be glued to our crate. But I'm a little extra so, you know, I paint almost all of it. So get those two little things painted. Houses are all painted. Now we're going to make um, a little bit of, I well, guess what we call shiplap now, but on the outside of the house, we just call it some wood grain, like it would be the grain of the wood. Maybe they did call it shiplap. I've got a little bit of my fingernail in there. So I did both of those, and then I got a tiny little paintbrush, and I thought I was going to use this antique wax and I did the first one. I used a popsicle stick because my ruler was too big. I usually use my ruler. And I didn't really like, it was, I didn't really like how it turned out. So I ended up using, I didn't even show that. I ended up using Truffle um, by Waverly. And then I have my sanding block and I just gave it a quick little sand. I used that sanding block from Dollar Tree but I put fresh sandpaper around it when it wears out because that's pretty economical. Now I take my, my antique, antique and glaze by Folk Art and just a little bit dry brush around the edges and right on those lines just so it looks like a little old house. Then I glue the little black door right back on there in the middle because I think that's cute and gives it some character. Adorable. And then I'm gonna glue those little metal pieces we made for the roof just glue it right on there using my little rubber silicone finger because that metal gets hot when you put that hot glue under there. So get that all nice and smooth down. Oh, those little houses are so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna glue it to the side of our little crate. Super easy. This is a super easy craft, y'all. And it's so cute when it's finished. It's probably, I have it on my, on my bar for 
Easter decoration, but I think you could leave it up all spring. I don't think it has to be Easter. I think we think of bunnies and carrots for Easter. I think of it as spring because Easter to me is all about Jesus and the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus. So I think about bunnies and carrots and new life of vegetation, new life and flowers and butterflies being spring. So I'm probably going to leave this up all spring until 4th of July or whatever our next season is that we're going to decorate for. So just getting these carrots, poking those skewers. Okay, that one broke because the styrofoam broke. I just hot glued it back together, stuck it in there because it's going to be at the bottom of there and you couldn't even tell. Actually, you couldn't even tell that it was had been broken. So I got all my little carrots in there, got my bunnies in there, and then I have this little chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree. I think it's from Dollar Tree. I think they come in a package. Um, if not, I know they have something similar. Put that little welcome sign in there, and then I'm still using this bag of grass that I've had for several years. And I get this stuff after the season when it's on clearance so that I can get the nicer stuff. Um, yeah, just poking it in there till it looks like how I like it. And just pick it up, wad it in, poke it in, put it where you like it, however much or however little you like. And oh my goodness, so cute. Tell me what you think. Okay, here's this little box I found that I think the grandkids brought over and left. Looks like it came from Walmart, 97 cents, who knows how long ago. So we're gonna get rid of this little ribbon and we're gonna get rid of the owl. I was thinking the bunny might fit over the owl, but nope, didn't fit. So we're just gonna get rid of that owl and then I'm gonna give it a coat of this paint by Waverly in Mineral. And it took two coats. You'll see that the first coat did not cover well, but just give it a quick coat all the way around and just a little bit on the inside, just in case some of that shows. I'll try to not make it show, but just in case it does. So I'm just gonna give it a good, you can see that one coat is not covering it good, but, and it's a little, you can see it's shiny. So it's a little slick, um, so it doesn't cover very good. I picked up these craft sticks at Dollar Tree and they're pretty thin, so they cut really easy with the scissors. So I'm just gonna measure and kind of get that angle of the box and then just cut them. And I'm gonna do them one at a time and glue them on so that I can see how they're gonna fit because I'm not really good with angles. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just gonna glue them on with some hot glue. The hot glue works fine with this. So see, I'm just gonna lay the second one up there. I'm just gonna make my dots and then just cut from one dot to the other, dot to dot, just like in elementary school. But I, I didn't, I should have overlapped this a little over the edges, just a tiny bit. Because when I do the second side, you'll see in a bit I show you that there's a little bit of a gap, but I end up putting that on the back side because I did catch my error. And instead of peeling them all off and starting over, I just put it on the back side and I don't think it's really that big a deal. I am kind of pedantic about a lot of things, but if you can put it on the back or kind of cover it up, I'm not going to be that, um, it's not going to be that big a deal. So here we go, all the way to the top. Now it's not gonna go all the way to the top. I'm not gonna split one of those horizontally. I'm going to put some twine around that top up there. I'm about to grab some and show you that I'm gonna wrap that twine around the top at the end. So not to worry about that. And then the little bunny, I'm gonna make it sit on the back. So I'm going to put a craft stick. I'm trying to find the back side. I'm going to put a craft stick where it sit, sticks up 
So I have a little platform for the bunny to sit on. I think that little bunny's cute. I got a pack of those. I want to say there's either five or eight. There, sometimes there's five, sometimes there's eight in a pack at Dollar Tree. And I like that the edges are kind of, um, kind of look like a burned wood or something. I don't know. Now we're going to take this antique wax by Folk Art. It's a, it's a antiquing wax. It's not really a paint, but I'm going to dry brush it on the edges a little bit. You can leave it plain if you want, but I think this just adds a little, you know, I like that dimension and I like how it looks a little aged or a little bit worn. It just looks more like kind of a normal wood stain or wood grain to it. And I'm not doing a whole lot, just kind of dry brushing it on there a little bit. And it's translucent as well because it's a, more like a glaze or a wax. So, and it dries super fast. So it's dry, we're done. So now I'm going to take the twine, like I told you before we were going to do, and we're going to, you well, we can use the thicker or the thinner from Dollar Tree, or I'm showing you the difference. See, the one from Dollar Tree is thinner. Not, not a whole lot, but it is thinner than the one that I picked up on, pretty sure I got that on Amazon. So I'm just going to put a little glue and stick it around. And just wrap it around, gluing it every once in a while. Making sure that there's no gaps. Sticking it down good. Get it close to that, to those craft sticks so that there's no gaps. And for some reason, there's a, a, a wider gap on the front. So I ended up having to cut it in we'll see so I only have like two layers there but then when I get to the front two layers is not enough so you see how there's that extra gap but no worries we can fix that so just keep going and then cut it love this little silicone finger protector they they I get those at Dollar Tree they come in a pack of I'm gonna say there's four in a pack. There's my handy dandy tweezers I use. I tell you, I use them on every craft. You need to have a good pair of tweezers. So here I'm gonna just put the twine across the front so it doesn't have to wrap all the way around. And I just kind of incorporate that to the edge. And there you go. Maybe it needs one more little piece so you don't see that. Because that is the front. If that were on the back, really wouldn't matter that much and I'm gonna press that edge of that little frayed part of the twine down in with the glue so it doesn't fray anymore get that glue in there good and press it down so see how that works now be careful with this if you're not comfortable but I don't like all those little hairs of that sticking out so you can take a, a lighter and kind of burn those little hairs but, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, you can just maybe try to trim them off with your scissors. But I like to just burn those off a little bit. And then clean up with my little ladybug desktop vacuum cleaner. Love her. She's handy dandy. She's a good little tool to have if you craft. But she picks up glitter really good too. Now, my white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum. That's a staple in my craft room. Um, get a, this little bunny a good coat covers really good I'm trying to keep it off the edges because I really do like the the look of that kind of brown burnt edge I'm sure when they cut it out that's just what happens now you can see my paint is a little bit thick so I just have that little spray bottle it's so handy to have I just have it hanging on that drawer one of these days I'm gonna show you all what's in the what I reach in down there it's like a 12 inch cubbies down there and I have some little 12 inch, um, what do you call them? They're little boxes that slide in my 12 inch cubbies. So they're, they're not really drawers, but I use them like drawers. And so I have that little bottle just hanging off the edge of that. So it works really good. I can just reach in there from where I'm standing to, to craft. Okay, these little eggs were 90% off. So now, we're going to give this bunny some dimension. 
and we're going to use this aged gray by rust-oleum and i've got a little kind of chippy brush it's kind of just a worn out brush actually a stencil brush that's kind of worn out a little bit of paint on there wipe most of it off and then just go around the edges just getting a little bit of paint on there just to give him a little dimension i still want him to be white but just a little bit of that gray gives him a little outline, a little shadow effect. I don't really want him to look dirty. I just want to give him a little dimension. So now I'm gonna glue the bunny on that little lip we made on the back. And I really should have put the handle on at this point, but I was super excited about getting this grass. I don't even know where this grass came from. I've probably had it for several years. I've been using this grass on a lot of different projects. It goes a long way. Uh, you can buy Easter grass after the season, super cheap because there's always a bunch of grass left over in the stores. Um, so my advice to you is buy stuff after the season because it's so much cheaper. So I just throw these little eggs in there. Here jute I found at Dollar Tree. I was really excited about it when I found this and I had it for a while and haven't used it. I'm going to see how much I need to make a little handle. Because remember, we cut that little ribbon handle off in the beginning. Now, it started fraying off the wire when I cut it. So, I'm trying to twist it around and then bend the wire up to keep it from fraying. However, when we put the hot glue on, it'll kind of keep it from doing that. So, we're just going to hot glue it to the inside of the little wooden basket right about in the middle now it takes a minute because the wire i don't know why it takes so long but it does take a minute now i'm using my little tool my little cricket weeding tool and then i got eggs going everywhere see i should have put that handle on before i put the grass in but i didn't that's okay sometimes i do things a little backwards but it all gets done in the end This one was super duper easy. So here, this was last year, Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use this side, took the label off. I don't wanna sand all that glitter. Nobody wants to sand all that glitter off. So took a piece of, this was actually some old wrapping paper I had, but most of the time I'm using that, um, you know, packing paper that you use to wrap packages to mail. <clears throat> then I'm gonna grab my X-Acto knife out of that little air quote drawer and flip it over now sometimes I will use my mat and then just put it on the table I'm lifting it off just a little bit so the exacto knife goes through I am working on a piece of cardboard covered with paper so I could have just used it and poked it through but this works so quick and easy okay bought this calendar at Dollar Tree last year 2021 and April's had a cute little bunny on it. It might have been March. I don't know. So I'm trying to see if it's going to fit on there. And it looks like it's going to fit great. Yeah, I have a little paint on there left over from another project. I'm going to dry that off. Oh, from that bunny while ago. So it's going to work. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim around it. Now, I don't even care if it's that close around the edges. And you will see why later. So just I'm just going to trim roughly around the edges. It doesn't matter if some of that white is left. Okay, see this? Now, the background of this is white, so I'm going to use my white paint. And I'm just going to give it one good coat because it covers good. Now, this absorbs the paint really fast. It dries really fast with this chalk paint. So I'm giving it one really good coat. It's all it needs. You can see a little bit of that... Um, I guess we'll call it brown through there that but it's okay because the background of that calendar is not solid anyway okay do you see how good this is looking so far all right now I'm gonna make those lines see those lines across there well I decided that I need to trim it down a little bit more because some of those pieces were hanging off the edge I think so I needed to trim it down just a wee bit more just so they didn't hang off the edge which is fine, no worries. Now, I think that's gonna work good. 
Okay, so those lines that look like boards, shiplap, look like that. So I'm marking where they are, where they ex so that it will extend out past our image. So, because we want it to look like it's part of it. So I'm taking my ruler and making lines across there. Then I'm going to take the truffle by Waverly, Waverly in the color truffle, and a tiny little paintbrush. And I'm going to use this ruler. Now, no need to go all the way across because our image is going to be covering most of it up. So we're just going to go along the edges. Now, I'm going to make sure that that's enough. Look at that. Can you look at that? Thumbs up. Now, this truffle is kind of a cool color. And you see in there that there's that golden color and then there the but the there's two different colors of brown there's the golden and then there's the the dark so this wax is more golden you can see on the paper where I've wiped off for the dry brushing that there's the golden and then there's the more cool and so we're gonna put both of those in here so that it looks like it matches up then I'm going to put it down. I'm, to make it really, really incorporate in, I'm going to use both of them. I'm going to use it on my calendar, too. Can we Mod Podge now, please? Yes, there we go. Mod Podge as our glue. I'm trying not to get crumbs all over everything, so I'm opening it over the trash can. I do have a trash can down there. I'm going to put it all over this now, it dries so fast, too, y'all. You're going to have to get a bunch on there so that it will stay moist. And even though this is in double time, it I am doing it pretty fast. And then just, you know, slop it on there pretty good, but put it pretty evenly, too. And then get that calendar, get that image on there as quickly as possible. Lining up all of those lines that we painted on there and then smooth it out. Don't let, try not to have any little air bubbles. Now, Mod Podge is going to make wrinkles. Don't freak out about that. Okay, don't freak out about the wrinkles. They will smooth out when it dries. Now, I'm going to put a little Mod Podge under the edges that started drying out. And then sometimes those wrinkles are because there was some dry under there, but it will smooth out. I promise. And then I'm going to put it around the edge, get all the edges done, and then I'm going to put a little thin coat on top, too, just to seal it. So I'm going to let it dry. Me fanning it does not make it dry, but it dries super fast. Now we're going to make a bow with this beautiful ribbon I picked up at Sam's Club. A huge roll of it. Um, I used this at a baby shower I did, so I just had it already pulled off. So I'm kind of measuring how big I want my loops. I'm just going to make two big loops. And it's the same on both sides, so we don't have to worry about there being a front or a back. So, And I'm going to pull them up. To the center to make sure that the loops are the same size and then cut that tail off then I'm going to use a little piece of twine to tie around the middle and just tie it in a little double knot make sure it's nice and secure and then I'm just cut that little excess off and then just fluff it up a little bit and for that center sometimes I'll take a little piece of um, ribbon and make a little circle, tie a little piece of twine around that and then just tie it once and then tie it to the middle of our bow like that and you can have a bow that looks like that. That is not what I want today obviously. Now I ripped that off pretty quick. I'm going to make another double bow, a tiny bit smaller than that one, to put in the center. So same same little um, concept, but I'm not going to have any tails on this one. Lay it out. Now the one thing about making things laying flat is you have to remember when you hang it on the wall, it looks a little different. So you need to kind of pick it up and look at it like it's going to hang on the wall. That's one thing I did not do with this. So at the very, very end, and after we're off camera, I ended up having to kind of redo it a little bit. So I think that these little florals look like the leaves in the picture. 
I get I got these off Amazon uh, for to decorate for a baby shower and I have just used 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 these so they were a very good buy um, you can just search for greenery on Amazon and there's all kinds that those need to be ironed I would just get out my little press and iron those out later for another project but I'm just gonna pop a few of these in like I said I'm not the best at uh, florals or greenery or any of that but this is pretty simple if I can't do this I'm in trouble so I'm just poking it under there putting a little glue on it get it under there I get this I got these little flowers at Dollar Tree and they look like they're kind of made out of corn husk I don't know and so I glue it to the middle And this is the part I should have done, like how it was hanging on the wall. And there you go. Super cute. Got my bunny holding it. A bunny holding a bunny. How about that? Love it. Hey, I really hope that you're enjoying this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell, it'll notify you every time I upload a new video, you won't miss any content. Okay, right here I have the sign from Dollar Tree. I was showing you what it looked like before. I put the brown paper on the glittery side and we're gonna use the back side. And then here's these carrots that I have and I'm gonna use three of them. And I am going to paint this. No, I'm not going to paint it. I apologize. I'm going to use some scrapbook paper. And I bought this at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to use some glue stick and glue it down. I'm going to use a lot of glue on this so the paper will stick good. And then I'm just going to line it up and I'm going to rub it down good. And I'll use my squeegee because that helps the glue get all pressed down underneath there. And then I use my X-Acto knife and get a nice crisp clean edge. And then because it wasn't long enough, I can just match those lines up and get that to cover this nice long sign. Look how nice that matches up and then just trim that off. And it, I, I love this paper. It just makes the signs so cute. So can't even tell where I pieced it by, by the time I get all this done. Now, I'm gonna do the same um, concept with these carrots. I'm going to just trace the orange scrapbook paper. I just chose these different prints. Um, I'm gonna do two with the polka dots and one with the gingham. And just put the glue on there, press the paper down, and use that X-Acto knife and you know it's like tracing around it with the exacto knife and it cuts it off nice and crisp and it looks great you can use the sandpaper method if you choose and um but i didn't want the paper to look any look distressed in this one so yeah i'm going to do the top with this cute green polka dot paper i mean you choose whatever kind of paper you want if you choose to do this put a thin coat of mod podge on top so that the paper is protected. I'm going to do that on all three carrots and the sign, the wooden part of the sign. I'm not going to show you all of that because this video is long enough already without me having to add in all that extra stuff. Now I'm going to put some twine around almost, I think every carrot that I make in this video, I do this. So watch this one carefully because I don't think I show you as good in every video how, how this works. Just wrap it around the top glue it down, wrap it around the top, glue it down. It's easy peasy. And then I do a little bit different with in each video with each carrot in this video. Some I put a little twine bow, some I make a little bow out of some uh, ribbon, but these carrots turn out so cute. I just love this. I think they're so I don't know, whimsical. Love it. Okay, then I'm just going to glue them once I figure out how to, I want to arrange them. Oh yes, poke my holes back in there. Oh, nope, gonna put some beads on the, on the hanger. 
I decided I'm going to put some beads on the hanger. So these hangers had the little plastic, uh, what do you call that? I don't know. It's like a little plastic tab. Made it really easy to put those beads on. And it makes it really easy just to string that back through there. Now, I'm playing with it, and I can't decide if I want it to go up as a hanger or to hang down like that. And I really kind of decided that I liked it hanging down like that. And so, um, instead of a bow, I decided I was just going to wrap some of this burlap ribbon that has polka dots on it that I got at Dollar Tree around the bottom. And then I'm just going to take some of this twine and do the same. Just wrap it around the bottom a couple times and secure it with some hot glue on the back and snip it off with my scissors. And I love my little silicone finger that I get at Dollar Tree, a little finger protector, because I can just press that hot glue in there. And I'm just gonna hot glue these carrots on. This is a super simple DIY and it's super cute. Um, I just glue that down there and then I did glue, I don't know if I showed this or not. Yeah, I'm gonna glue a hanger on the back. I'm just gonna glue a little loop of twine and then I glue a piece of that ribbon across there to just reinforce it. It's not heavy, but you know, I just don't want that twine to come loose. And there you go. Okay, next we're just gonna take some more of these carrots that I have a plentiful supply of. We're gonna take some regular burlap ribbon and some green burlap ribbon and this was super easy you could do this with those wooden packs that I have up there in the in the picture in the frame and we are just going to wrap and wrap and wrap gluing on the back side as we go just keep wrapping and wrapping and you just kind of have to get your rhythm this rhythm right here worked really good for me and I would stop and glue and sometimes I would have to stop and kind of push it up you know putting the glue on the back side not the front side and um, and then I kind of would lose my rhythm and I'd have to get back in the rhythm of it but just a little glue there just to keep it from sliding around and it went pretty fast once I got the rhythm down there you go see I had to switch my hands back um, and I just went all the way down to the bottom and then I did use my lighter and got rid of all the fuzzies in the very end I don't think I show that but um, I did do that. Now the green was a little more tricky when you get to the very top, but this part right here was um, pretty easy, same as the bottom. Just wrap it around there, you know, kind of get the rhythm going, and um, just keep going around and around. Just I just put the glue on the sides on the bottom, but this one was a little bit trickier, so I kind of I used a little bit more glue, but really didn't take a whole lot of glue. And then I'm showing you, I just did that on the very tips. I just kept going around. I'm just barely in frame here, sorry. But you can figure it out. Just wrap it around, wrap it around until you get it all the way to the ends and just secure it down with your hot glue. Here I've got two strands the same length and I'm just gonna tie them in a simple little, you know, knot. What am I doing with this white? I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna do a little dry brush on the carrots so they're not quite so bright orange a little bit of white on them will just kind of make them a little bit less orange bold so yeah kind of forgot I did that but yes these are so, so cute I have them displayed in my home and going to string these carrots on carrots oh my goodness I'm gonna string these beads on my carrot <laughs> Um, just on one strand and then I'm gonna tie the other strands in a bow well you'll see what I'm talking about sometimes it's hard for me to explain what I'm doing so I'm gonna tie these other two that are in the center in a knot and then I'm gonna tie another knot apparently and then I'm gonna tie a bow at, at some point I tie a little bow up there and it looks really cute. I just like little simple twine bows sometimes when there's a lot going on somewhere else. I think just a simple twine bow is good. Then I just tie a little knot there and put a little dab of hot glue to keep it extra secure. And that's it for this one. I think it's cute. It was super easy and it's 
just really cute to add. You could add it to a tear tray or any little vignette. It's Next DIY. Here's a sign I've had in my stash for a while. You see it's Thanksgiving. I'm just going to take this hanger out and it's one of those good ones that has the little uh, plastic tabs on it. I'm just going to rip this off so that it's a smoother texture. Cover this the sunflowers up with some um, this is just that brown roll of paper you can get at Dollar Tree. So the back is finished. You don't have to worry about painting over that and then you can paint over this side. I'm just going to give it one good coat of white um, I think it's called Linen by Brustoleum. I use it all the time. I'm going to use my ruler to make a couple of lines. So I'm going to paint it and make it look like, you know, shiplap or wood or whatever. And, you know, I don't really measure. I eyeball. And I'm using uh, chalk paint by Waverly in the color Elephant. I'm going to use my ruler to just make some lines. They don't have to be even. They don't have to be smooth. In fact, rugged is good, and each time I pick it up, I wipe that off. So when I lay it back down, I don't get paint everywhere. Now I'm going to dry brush a little bit of this gray so that it kind of looks like wood over those lines, kind of so it kind of smudges it, and then in from the sides and a little in the middle just so it kind of looks like faux wood. Um, yeah, a little bit along the edges, as much or as little as you want. This is how I wanted mine to look. Now I take an old t-shirt, a little piece of an old t-shirt, and kind of buff it. It makes it smooth. And I'm just showing you there's those carrots as an alternative. If you don't have a gajillion of these little <laughs> orange carrots like I do. So we're going to cover some in scrapbook paper again. I've already shown you in the first DIY how to do this, so I'm not going to go in great detail. Um, with these black and white ones, but this is how we do, we're going to do it, and I'm showing you how it looked like a little bitty piece of paper, but you can actually get quite a bit out of it. So, gluing the black on the bottom, just glue stick, get it on there nice where it fits, and cut the excess off. I'm going to scrape it down good. Gonna flip it over. I'm looking for something. My Exacto knife. It uh, looks like I might need a, a new blade on that one. Hopefully, I change that. Um, yeah, just trim that off. I'm loving this scrap of paper together and this green. It's it's kind of funny when I was looking for paper. I was like, I need something that kind of looks like it would be the top of a carrot. I didn't really have anything. And when I chose that green polka dot I used in the previous DIY, and then this one, once I got it on the carrots, it was like, oh my gosh, it looks so cute. But I would have never really picked it to be the top of the carrots. But look how cute that looks. Oh my goodness. So here they all are. Oh, I'm in love with this one. It's not even really my style. I'm really more like cottage shabby chic, modern shabby chic, but I think these turned out super cute. I do like black and white though, I really do. So here I'm wrapping that twine around there again. And I do believe I made some, I'm playing with fire again. And I do believe that I made um, some tiny little bows to go on each one. Yes, just simple little twine bows. And then I'm gonna glue them just right there at the top. And then I'm seeing about my placement on here, how I want them to lay, look how cute they look. Then just gonna hot glue them. Secure them with some hot glue, all four of them. And you know, if you want them straight, put them straight. If you don't, don't. Putting that little hanger back on there. I love those little hangers and there you go. And I decide I'm just gonna put a little bow and I really like to do simple bows. I'm not much of a fancy bow kind of girl and so I've kind of gotten myself into these. Just lay the strips down and I'm making sure that it's the right size. Um, I've taught my Sunday school kids how to make these bows and they're like, oh, that's so easy. And I'm like, yep. 
You can make it look cute and it doesn't have to be hard. So I'm just layering each layer um, a little shorter than the one that was underneath it. Then I'm just going to pinch them together in the middle, take a piece of twine. I like to wrap it, usually I like to wrap it around a couple times unless I'm going to put something else on top. But I'm just going to wrap it around a couple times and secure it with a knot and then just twist it and fluff it and twist it and make it look how I want it to look. Super cute. Then I'm just going to hot glue it on there and this one will be done. And I mean to tell you, this one doesn't look like any of the rest of them. It doesn't match. But um, I love it. Oh yeah, I decided to put this little thing in the middle. I forgot about this. Um, I got that black and white ribbon after Christmas on clearance. It was a, I don't know if it's Christmas or Valentine's. It looks like it might have been Valentine's. I've had it for a couple years. And just watch the sales after the seasons, if you don't know that already. You can find some really good deals. Um, you might not always get what you want, but you can get some good deals. So just wrapping it around my fingers, getting it in the middle. Securing it and putting that right in the center. That just added a little extra flair to it. Super cute. Let me know what you think about this one. If you like the black and white. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Next DIY, more of these carrots and and the and the Dollar Tree sign. I'm showing you what the original one looked like. I've already kind of prepped it by removing all that stuff and covering up the glitter with some paper. Um, there you go. And um, yeah, so these, so these, this, I bought these when they were a dollar, but even at a dollar twenty-five, like I said in my intro, that would be a dollar twenty-five. Those carrots were half a half. Of a sign so I'm gonna say since I paid a dollar for them that would be 50 cents and a little bit of paint and a little bit of ribbon so let's say it was even like three three dollars um, so I'm just using some orange paint to paint the bottom of the carrot I'll use some green paint to paint the top of the carrot I did probably I think I did two coats on these because it didn't cover very good and then I took a darker green and just kind of went around the edges to give it some character and some dimension. And then I just kind of made some little brush strokes up to kind of go in between there to make it look like it had some dimension to it. And then I mixed a little bit of brown with some orange to make my orange darker because I did not have a darker orange. And then I'm just going to kind of dry brush this around the edges coming in from the sides so that it looks like, you know those little brown lines in the carrots? Look how cute they look. Then I took a little white to just put some highlights on it because I think that just makes it look like the light's shining on it or just, I don't know, it just adds some extra flair that makes it look a little cuter. So I'm gonna just tie a little piece of twine around the top of those and then I'm going to take some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to just go in with a dry brush and give this just a little bit. I mean, you can put, you can do as little or as much. If you like it really, really, um, a lot of people call this distressing. I just like to make it look like wood or aged. Um, then you do a lot. I didn't, I didn't do a lot. Now cut this out on my Cricut. And I'm using my Frisco transfer tape that I absolutely And yeah, so I'm going to place this on here and it looks like it's pretty centered. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I like to just eyeball. I'm not much of one for getting out the ruler to measure. I probably should on some of my projects, but I usually eyeball it and it's okay. So I took this uh, ribbon and I just cut off a little piece of it. I feel the need to show you here. Not that I don't think you're smart enough to figure that out, but then I just pinch it up in the middle and cut off a piece of twine, tie that twine. I wrap the twine around several times. 
and then just tie it in a knot and then we're just going to hot glue these little bows right at the carrot top. I didn't put any twine around these uh, because I realized that you couldn't even see the twine because the bow covered it all up. So why waste the time, the steps, and the twine? So then, you know, here I'm with my, I'm really not a pyro maniac, but I <laughs> do like for the edges not to fray. And then I really kind of like that little brown edge that it gives it. So they're glued. We're going to secure the carrots to the sign as soon as I get all my stuff out of the way. Um, I really do feel a little claustrophobic with all my stuff in the way here, but um, I try to stay in frame most of the time, but I get a little carried away. So get these, get these secured down with some hot glue and the glue, because this is kind of like, these are more like paper carrots. It, it holds it. It's going to hold it really good. They're secured down. Oh my gosh. Gosh, this is looking so cute. So I'm going to take a couple of pieces of this ribbon. I'm going to cut them the same length. And then I'm going to decide how far apart I want my two pieces to hang. And then I'm going to um, glue these to the back. And I, I, I kind of go back and forth a little bit to see... I'm using the lines on this uh, board that I have on my, this is a Fiskars um, cutting board so I can cut with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to put that tape on the end of the twine and run my twine through these beads, making my hanger. Sometimes it's a little harder than others. If it's very hard, sometimes I just throw that bead back in the jar and get some more. So this, this, I'm going to make the hanger decide how long I want it. And I'm going to bring the hanger up through the front and tie a knot because I like that look. To just give these beads um, a kind of a translucent, more of a translucent, less vibrant and I put a piece of tape in the middle of this skewer so that they wouldn't touch each other and just gave them one thin coat of paint. I put a piece of tape on the back side where I was gonna drill the hole because it kinda messed up the back side if I didn't. So I'm gonna do the same technique that I've done with several DIYs in this video and cover these carrots with paper. And orange on the bottom and green on the top, polka dots. I have a thing for polka dots. You should know that by now if you've watched any of my videos. Now I'm going to do that same dry brush technique I did when I painted them, but I'm doing it on the paper this time. And yes, you can do that. But I'm using the Antique Wax um, by Waverly. And then I'm going to do just a little white dry brushing just to give it some highlights and just a little more personality and just, you know, wherever the, you think that the light would hit it and just makes it look a little more whimsical. I'm almost finished with this and wait till you see the end result. It's kind of hard to show a whole garland and keep it in frame, but when you see the end result. Now this is probably not a garland you could hang on your mantle, but it's more one you would lay across. Okay, we're starting off with all of this scrap wood. All of it was free to me. There were pieces that I picked up here and there, out of the trash, whatever. So we're going to start with these three little pieces that I cut to these specific lengths and give them a coat of this kind of green that I, I mixed. And I have one piece longer than the other two pieces on purpose. And so I'm going to take this twine I've been using this twine for a long time. I don't even know, remember where I got it. I kind of think I got it at Walmart at Christmas. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to twist it around. And then, just like when you wrap a present and then you twist it the other way. And then on the back side, I'm going to tie it. Tie the two pieces together. So you can need to leave a little tail um, when you first start so that you have something to tie it to. 
and I'm just going to tie it really tight on the back and then just snip those little ends off and do all three of those like that. On the front side of it, um, I'm going to take a little piece and slip it underneath at a crisscross at an angle and then just tie it up so that it looks like a cross. And I kind of like to, um, I'm going to do this, this particular one in a bow or just a knot. Let's see, just a knot. That's what I thought. Um, and I kind of like to make the edges, kind of spread them out so it looks like a cross. Um, I forgot to kind of uh, put the little glaze on it. And so I'm going to do that on these and then I'll go back and do the other one. I'm going to use this antique wax by Folk Art and then I'm just going to use a little baby wipe. You're going to see me use that a lot in this uh, video just to kind of wipe that glaze off. See the difference? Okay, so here all three of them are glazed. Now this is going to be my little stand. Um, I decided I wanted to put these three little crosses on a stand so I'm going to paint this little piece for the stand and do it the same way that I did um, the, all the three pieces that have the little crosses on them. I just think that that twine, you know, when you make the twine like that, it, they look like crosses. So I made the one taller cross and the two smaller crosses to represent the crosses on Calvary. The cross that Jesus was on and the other two crosses. Um, we don't really know what they look like, but we like to think that Jesus was in the middle and that he was taller. That's how it's always depicted anyway. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're going for here anyway. Whether it was really like that or not, that's what we're going for. So you know I always that's a little hack. I put my paintbrush in a little bag to keep it moist in case I need it to, you know, it was the same paintbrush I used on those three. So, um, I think my little thumbs up was that I didn't need it to be complete coverage, especially since I'm going to, you know, glaze it a little bit, put that little glaze on there and put that antique wax on there and make it a little darker. And I'm going to have those three um, crosses sitting on top of there. Had to go get a baby wipe. Sorry about that. And just wipe that off. And you know, I always like to do the bottom too because somebody might turn that little baby upside down and see the bottom and heaven forbid that it wouldn't be finished out. I always like to finish up the bottoms. So here we go. All done. So now we're going to glue those three crosses down. Now, because of that twine... And on there they don't sit straight but that's I was okay with that I was okay because it's, it's very rustic so I really was okay with it not sitting completely straight here I go with my tweezers <laughs> can't craft without those tweezers so I just for some reason that glue wasn't wanting to adhere really good at first so um, here we go with this one and then I'm using my little pink tool from Dollar Tree um, that little spatula I use it more on the end than I do the metal point I'm trying to remember which end was the the bottom glue it down get the excess glue off don't want a little bead of glue around there and these turned out so adorable. I'm so happy with how they turned out. We cut this size. I love the wood grain. I love the color. We're just going to leave it natural. And we're going to use this little natural heart. This one's going to be natural. Very natural with the... The raffia, raffia, however you say it. I've always said it raffia. I hear people say it raffia, but however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, right? Okay, so just a little bit wrapped around. Now, I 
this one I couldn't get to my my straw wasn't long enough to wrap the same way I did on the last DIY so I just did it one way and then did it the other way you'll see what I'm talking about so I did it sideways and now I'm going to do it long ways I just have to find some long enough I'm going to tell you that if you buy some of this raffia it will last you forever I mean I've been using it for a long time I've had this in my stash for a long time and it's it's lasted me for quite a while and because it just doesn't take that much you can make bows out of it you can use it in on wreaths and it just it really lasts a long time and that little piece just didn't quite make it so we just stick a little piece of glue on it now I'm thinking you could put a bow there would be super cute but I'm gonna put a heart there now I decided that I wanted to put the word love on there I thought maybe with red, since the blood of Jesus, you know, covers our sins and he did it out of love for us, but that red kind of bled in the grain of the wood. So I had this gold paint pen and I really liked um, how it did better. I, I really liked the thinner, the thinner pen with the Sharpie, but I didn't like how it bled. So I, look how quick and easy and simple that was and how beautiful it is. I just love it. So I'm going to take some of this um, sheepskin paint and these paint brushes I got at Ross for 12 bucks. Look, 30 pieces, 30 paint brushes. And they're so soft. The bristles are so soft. So I chose this one is the perfect size to do this project with. And I just love this paint color. It's called Sheepskin. And it's um, folk art chalk paint. Love it. So I'm just going to give it one good coat. It only took one coat because it's very close to the same color as the wood. And I really wouldn't care if the wood grain showed through a little bit because it's just a it's a pretty piece of wood too. I mean it's just pine, but it's still pretty. And then I decided that you know we can't have it just one flat color. So we are going to dry brush some of this, I think it was called Desert Sand by Americana. And so we're gonna have that, I'm telling you, we're gonna have the ribbon on there. So we really just need to do around the edges. We don't have to waste our time or waste our paint doing all the whole thing just around the edges and just do it quickly do it you mean you do however much you want or however little you want it's just whatever it's just a uh, personal preference so just, here i am with this ribbon from sam's club it was a huge roll of ribbon i got and i'm just loving it this easter season for a neutral easter color so we're gonna use this for the cross here so I'm just gonna glue it down Get that glue on there there we go okay pretty easy easy peasy just make sure it's straight and even that we got the same amount of space all the way across the top because we're gonna pinch it after we get it all glued down, just like we did the other ones. All three, all of these um, DIYs kind of have the same theme, the crosses, just different ways that you can do them. So yeah, I'm saying we don't want it to be too tight there, but get it, get it nice and, get it taut, but not like too, too taut. That's really good explanation, wasn't it? Now we'll get our little piece of twine, run it underneath diagonally, and then I'm surprised I didn't grab my tweezers. Tight, tight. Make sure all my edges are just turned right. Tie a little knot in it. And we're going to make a little twine bow for the middle. And it's going to be super, super cute. Twine it 
twine bows are easy to make. Wrap them around your fingers. For your loops, then just tie it in the middle with the extra piece, and voila, there we go. A piece of little spot of glue, press it down. So wood. It is a beautiful, smooth finish. I did have to sand it, but I sanded it, and it's just a beautiful piece of wood. I got this out of a dumpster at a cabinet shop. Yep, you got it. And it was already this size. It's super thick. It's not super heavy. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not, like, super-duper heavy. Um, but I'm going to put this glaze on here, and then I'm, I'm taking a wet wipe, baby wipe, and I'm just smearing it. The, the baby wipe is helping to move that color around. And I'm just getting it on all the little cracks and nooks and crannies and grooves. And I'm doing all sides of it. And now it's done. And then I'm just going to take my little sanding block from Dollar Tree and I add a little piece of sandpaper to it. And just sand the edges. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just sand all around the edges just to give it a little bit of a distressed look um, because this is going to be a really simple one. There's not going to be a whole lot to this one. Um, so I, I want to give it a little bit of character. So I'm just going to take this twine and, you know, leave that tail so we have something to tie it to. And here I go out of frame again. I apologize. But it's the same technique we've done on all of them. But this piece of wood was a little bigger, so it's kind of hard to stay in frame. Okay, you see how that kind of is right there? Um... I don't know how to explain that, but you'll see that I I did take that underneath and brought it up to tie it so that it caught that loose piece. There we go. You just have to secure it. And then under, diagonal, tighten a knot. Same as I've done on every single one of these projects. Super easy. I just think these are so easy and so, so pretty. So fitting for Easter. So I kind of struggled with this little one trying to get it to look a certain way. But when they're rustic, they just don't have to be perfect, right? They just need to look what the kind of trendy word is organic. So I'm using this, this twine again that I've had forever. And I'm going to make a twine bow with my fingers. Leave a long tail. Wrap it around my fingers a couple times. Leave a tail on this end. Cut another piece of string. Wrap it right around the middle of those loops, find the center, wrap it around, tie it in the middle. Easy peasy. Then we'll just glue it right in the middle. Now I decide I want to put a little greenery or some little florals with it. And so I had this little pick that I had picked up from, I think this came from Dollar Tree. And so I cut off some green and you know here I go trying to be a floral arranger again and yeah it, it turned out cute so just bear with me here so I just kind of stick I'm just trying to kind of stick it in there and see what looks good and how it looks good and it just takes me a while somebody's probably saying don't do that don't do that I wish I had somebody in the room with me telling me what to do with this stuff because I am not the best at it. I just, I need help. I need, I should watch some tutorials on how to arrange, how to arrange greenery and florals and how to make wreaths. I'm not very good at making wreaths either. But anyway, we'll just glue those little pieces of greenery in there and put the bow on there and you know what it all looks cute very cute in the end I took that I took those needle nose pliers pliers and I smushed down the center of that bow a little bit because you know sometimes when you make a knot in the middle of there it gets real thick and it just smashed it down pretty good so that's what I did that's what you saw me doing with those those pliers earlier so I'm just gonna stick those three cute little white flowers right to the center of my bow 
kind of just smush them all together. And it turned out really cute. The wood was the last piece from those three that were the three crosses and we're just going to give it the same sheepskin a coat of paint with the sh same sheepskin paint that I did the other project with it's just such a good neutral color it's not white white and it's not too ivory or creamy it's a little bit ivory but it looks good. I'm saying I don't care that it's got the holes in there. I could have filled those holes, but I don't care. I actually picked this up off the curb. I've had this for maybe a couple years. I've used, it was a, a like a shipping crate. It was a small shipping crate, and I've made several projects out of it. And so this is the last of it. And so this was the last little scrap, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this to just say he is risen because that's 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 the whole theme of easter so we're going to dry brush a little bit of that green to kind of tie in that green from the three little crosses and just i don't know i just love this green so we're just going to use it and keeping with the rustic we're going to just put a little bit of hot glue there and wrap the twine around the ends. Now had I been thinking I would have put my decal on first but no. I put my twine on first because I like to do things to the difficult way. So here we go. Just gently pull it off and it comes off like a charm. And then we're going to transfer it. Now I decide I'm going to pull that out a little bit right to the center scrape it down a little bit just so it gets on the wood and adheres and it usually does really well with this transfer tape and look at that would you look at that beautiful If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to say a big thank you for watching. And remember to be still and know that He is God.